Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're delving into an important discussion on how glyphosate, a widely used herbicide, can affect female fertility and overall reproductive health. This conversation is drawn from recent findings and comprehensive research showing that glyphosate exposure, even at levels deemed safe, can lead to hormone disruption, oxidative stress, and long-term damage to reproductive organs. Joining me is Ilara Skye, who focuses on natural health insights. Ilara, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me, Ethan. I look forward to shedding light on this topic and helping our listeners understand why glyphosate is more than just a chemical in weed killers. It's actually quite pervasive in our environment and can accumulate in the body over time. Research now confirms it can affect everyone, whether you realize you've been exposed or not. Let's talk about glyphosate itself. It's the active ingredient in Roundup, introduced by Monsanto in the 1970s. We hear about it primarily in farming and landscaping, but the real concern is that Glyphosate residues show up in our bodies, including in pregnant women and children. In fact, studies indicate that 60% to 80% of the general U.S. population has trace amounts of glyphosate in their urine. How does that align with what researchers are saying about the health impact? It aligns directly with the findings that glyphosate can disrupt crucial biological pathways. Even though it targets an enzyme pathway in plants, our gut microbiome has a similar pathway that becomes vulnerable. Additionally, glyphosate binds to toxic metals like aluminum, which can then pass more easily through barriers, such as the blood-brain barrier. The biggest issue is that glyphosate exposure at levels previously considered safe is now linked to damaging the ovaries, altering hormone levels, and setting the stage for conditions like PCOS. That's a serious concern. According to these studies, one effect is a drop in estrogen and follicle-stimulating hormone or FSH, and a rise in testosterone and progesterone. Those changes disrupt normal ovarian function, sometimes mimicking PCOS patterns. There's also the finding about fewer healthy follicles in the ovaries and more abnormal ones. Could you outline the longer-term implications of that? Certainly. Once follicular damage is done, it's permanent, as ovarian follicles don't regenerate. Over time, you face a higher risk of infertility, and problems like endometrial hyperplasia. That's a condition where the uterine lining grows too thick, raising concerns about irregular bleeding and potential malignancies. What's more alarming is that glyphosate's impacts can extend across generations. Research has shown that if pregnant animals are exposed, the genetic expression in the uterus of their offspring changes, even if those offspring never directly encounter glyphosate themselves. That generational angle is especially unsettling. It suggests that even if a person avoids direct contact later in life, earlier exposure can leave a legacy in the family line. Let's discuss how this chemical also interacts with real-world farming practices. Glyphosate-based herbicides often contain additional chemicals like POEA, which can make the glyphosate more harmful. What does that mean for the reproductive system? When glyphosate is combined with adjuvants such as POEA, the toxicity can amplify dramatically. One key enzyme that converts testosterone to estrogen, aromatase, is inhibited far more severely by these combinations, even at doses significantly lower than what's sprayed on crops. This results in a buildup of testosterone, a drop in estrogen, and an overall disruption in your reproductive cycle. It's not just about one hormone. It's a chain reaction that undermines egg maturation, ovulation timing, and uterine implantation capability. Let's not forget men in this discussion. Research indicates glyphosate disrupts testosterone production by targeting Leydig cells in the testes. These cells normally respond to luteinizing hormone to produce testosterone, but glyphosate interferes at multiple levels, including blocking cholesterol transport. What else do we know about that process? In short, glyphosate hijacks normal cellular functions. One mechanism is by reducing the expression of STAR, the protein responsible for moving cholesterol into the part of the cell where testosterone is made. Without enough cholesterol, testosterone production falls. Secondly, 
glyphosate triggers a form of cell death involving autophagy and ferroptosis, further destroying Leydig cells. That means you're losing both your testosterone factory and the raw materials needed to sustain production. It appears glyphosate doesn't just attack reproductive organs. It also disrupts mitochondria, the energy powerhouses of our cells, blocks detox enzymes in the liver, and drains essential minerals. Let's break that down a bit more. If your mitochondria can't generate energy efficiently, you see fatigue and hormone imbalances. When detox pathways slow, harmful compounds linger in the bloodstream, and if essential minerals like iron and manganese are bound up, additional imbalances emerge. Can you expand on how this cascade plays out? Sure. Glyphosate initially compromises mitochondrial function, leading to reduced ATP production. That means tissues with high energy demands, such as the brain and reproductive organs, suffer first. Meanwhile, cytochrome P450 enzymes in the liver become blocked, delaying the breakdown of toxins and even altering hormone metabolism. If that weren't enough, glyphosate also mimics the amino acid glycine, causing malformed proteins that can't do their job properly. Add in mineral deficiencies, like iron and manganese, and you've got the perfect recipe for oxidative stress, inflammation, and further hormonal disruption. So, the question is, what can be done to limit exposure? The data shows glyphosate commonly appears in non-organic crops and can remain in soil and water. It's sprayed on wheat, barley, and legumes right before harvest and ends up in our food supply. For listeners wondering how to protect themselves, can you summarize the practical steps suggested by the research? The primary recommendation is switching to organic foods, especially for high-residue items listed in the Environmental Working Group's Dirty Dozen. Next, avoid non-organic wheat and legumes, since glyphosate is often used as a drying agent on these crops. Eliminating seed oils made from GMO soy, corn, or canola is key, as they are typically laden with glyphosate. Another important step is filtering your water. Basic filters might not catch it, so look into high-quality filtration. Finally, healing your gut by restoring beneficial bacteria and essential minerals can help repair existing damage. You mentioned the gut microbiome. Let's clarify that a bit. Glyphosate disrupts beneficial gut bacteria while favoring harmful strains, which can lead to a leaky gut situation where toxins move into the bloodstream, triggering immune responses. Rebuilding gut health could involve probiotics, emphasizing whole foods, and cutting back on processed items. Is that right? That's correct. Addressing gut dysbiosis is crucial because inflammation from an imbalanced microbiome can worsen any hormonal or oxidative stress issues, including beneficial microbes like Ackermansia mucinifera helps restore the intestinal lining. Coupling that with an anti-inflammatory diet, free from glyphosate-laden ingredients, gives your body the best chance to recover. It's about both reducing intake of the chemical and repairing the internal environment that's already been compromised. Before we wrap up, I want to highlight some of the frequently asked questions based on this research. One common question, how exactly does glyphosate affect female fertility over time? It decreases key hormones like estrogen and FSH while boosting testosterone and progesterone. It also damages the ovarian follicles and can cause endometrial hyperplasia. All of these changes make conception more difficult and raise the chance of conditions like PCOS and endometriosis. The damage can persist even at exposure levels that regulators might label as acceptable. Another question that often comes up, can these effects be inherited by future generations? Yes. Epigenetic research shows glyphosate causes changes in gene expression in offspring who never had direct exposure. Those epigenetic shifts can be passed down, potentially affecting fertility for your children and grandchildren. This underscores why limiting exposure is so crucial. Lastly, people wonder if glyphosate is strictly a concern for women. The evidence clearly shows men are also affected. Would you summarize that? Absolutely. Glyphosate disrupts male fertility by interfering with testosterone production in Leydig cells. It blocks necessary enzymes and triggers cell death. Over time, that reduces testosterone levels, impairs spermatogenesis, and undermines overall hormonal balance. Thank you for summarizing these critical points, Alara. It's clear that glyphosate isn't just a weed killer. It's a chemical that can undermine reproductive health and overall wellness. We've covered how it disrupts hormones, depletes essential minerals, damages mitochondrial function, 
and even impacts future generations. We've also touched on practical steps to reduce exposure, from eating organic to filtering water and repairing gut health. It's been a comprehensive discussion, and I hope it empowers listeners to make informed decisions about their diets and lifestyles. Controlling glyphosate exposure isn't an overnight fix, but small, consistent actions, like being selective with food choices and improving gut health, can significantly reduce the toxic load. And that concludes today's episode of Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, here with Alara Sky, reminding you that staying aware of what's in our food and environment is key to safeguarding our well-being. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back soon with more insights on how to optimize your health through informed choices. Take care. Until next time. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.